I played every Naruto Clash of Ninja game. Here's my thoughts. Previously, I played all of the Naruto Ultimate Ninja games, but Ultimate Ninja isn't the only big Naruto fighting game series. Clash of Ninja does differ a little bit from Ultimate Ninja in that the gameplay doesn't really change as drastically over the course of the series, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Right off the bat, this series has kind of a weird release history. There were technically three different sub-series of Clash of Ninja. There was the standard Clash of Ninja games, Clash of Ninja Revolution, and Gekito Ninja Tyson EX. These videos are going to cover the games in kind of a semi-order. While I could just cover every game in release order, that would be pretty confusing because some games were released in the West, while others weren't, and some releases had overlap thanks to Western releases coming after a pretty hefty amount of time had passed from their original Japanese releases. Just trust me, it'll make sense at the end. And before we start, I want to thank my patrons, including Melancholis in the Omega Gamer tier. That's just Ash and but well, let's not get in the played every game games here, and of course, all of the wonderful people you see on your screen here. Thank you so much for your support. Alright, let's get into the games. Naruto Clash of Ninja was released in Japan in 2003 and the US in 2006. All of the games I'm showing you here will be on the GameCube unless I state otherwise. Visually, this game looks pretty good for a game from 2003. It's cell shaded and it has this general anime game look you'd expect from even a modern anime game. Rather than go the ultimate ninja route, they just went straight for the cell shaded look. Though, while the animations are fluid and nice to look at, the special move scenes are sort of underwhelming and leave something to be desired, especially when compared to the scenes in the Ultimate Ninja games. I know this is a different style of game from a completely different developer, but I still can't help but to compare the two since they're from the same IP. The stages look pretty nice at the end of the day, and they're about what you'd expect from a fighting game. There's also a lot of background elements. While some of them are just 2D sprites in the distance, sometimes you see these fun little dynamic 3D elements, like people eating ramen at the ramen shop while the fight goes on behind them. Though, there is a weird sense of scale, especially on the Hokage Rock stage, because it's somehow only slightly larger than a normal sized human adult for some reason? Actually, this game's whole sense of scale in general is just weird. I don't think the characters are actually on model because the child characters look like they were scaled up or the adult characters were scaled down. I don't know if it's just my imagination, but there's a weird kind of imbalance with characters' proportions here. I know it's kind of a nitpick, but I can't unsee it. Anyways, gameplay wise, this game is a fighting game with standard 2D movement, but also the option to move forward and backwards in the playing field using the the shoulder buttons to dodge. If you don't move or you hold back, you guard, and pressing a shoulder button while you're being attacked causes you to use a substitution attack at the cost of a little bit of your special gauge. There's two main attack buttons and two special buttons. The first main attack button is the standard punch attack that can be linked into combos, and the other is a ranged attack that you can either tap or charge up. You can mix and match the two buttons to perform different combos that you can find on the start menu in fights. The other buttons are grabs and special moves. Grabs can be performed at any time if you're in the range of the opponent and they don't dodge. Special attacks can be performed when the special gauge at the bottom of the screen is filled from taking and dealing damage. These special moves have these mini cutscenes that play, and while some of them are pretty cinematic, others, like Kakashi's, are just these short little cutaways. So this game is unique for a fighting game in that it doesn't always force you to face the opponent. While you can double tap away from the enemy while you're facing them to do a sidestep move, sometimes the enemy will do a substitution or you'll be attacking and you'll just lose your lock on. This sometimes leads to you doing a combo facing the complete wrong direction and it leads to you being completely open for an enemy attack. However, facing the wrong way does allow you to sprint in that direction, and you can force yourself to face the wrong way by just jumping over an opponent. Occasionally, this thing will happen where two attacks will clash and they'll make this little shockwave with a nice sound effect. I'm not sure exactly what causes this, but I'm pretty sure it's just two attacks hitting simultaneously. This seems like it happens more and more as the series goes on. I don't know if they slowly increase the timing window, but this is the only time I'm going to outright mention it. So one thing I wanted to mention here about the game gameplay in these games is that I really enjoy the ease of being able to make the combos. Though one unfortunate side effect of this combo system is how it makes a lot of, if not all of the characters, feel really similar to control. Yeah, the combos look different, but otherwise this feels really similar across the board. It's not identical though, and they are just different enough to make experimenting with different characters worth it, but I do think it's at least worth pointing that out. The modes in this game are probably the most strangely categorized modes I have ever encountered while making these videos. 
The modes are Story, One Player, Two Player, Play Against Computer, Survival, Time Attack, and Extras. Story mode is, of course, the story mode, and it covers the first arc of the Naruto story entirely from Naruto's perspective. It ends with a face-off against Zabuza, and, well, Rock Lee, I guess? The general flow of this story mode is that you get a short text description of the story, followed by a short little fully voiced dialogue scene between the characters. Note that I said short twice here, and that's because this entire story mode only takes about a half hour at best, and that's if you don't skip any of the cutscenes. The actual story descriptions are also very condensed and skip a lot of details, but they do get the job done at kind of vaguely describing what's going on. When you beat the story mode, you get a nice anime ending-esque credits sequence. One player mode is actually the arcade mode, it's just labeled one player mode. In this mode, it's super straightforward. You pick a character and then you take on eight straight fights. At the end, you get a score based on your performance and you input your name onto an in-game leaderboard. It works the same way across every game. They did add that credit sequence to the end when you beat it though, so I guess that's nice. Play against computer mode? It's, well, just a versus mode against the computer. Normally, this is put inside the versus menu, but I guess not for this game. You select your character and the computer's character and then you fight. Survival mode is a mode where you fight as many opponents as you can, one after another, with a health bar that only recovers a little bit between fights. I played this mode and I got 12 fights in, and they still weren't very challenging on the default difficulty. So I imagine that if you wanted this mode to be more fun, you'd probably want to set the difficulty to max before starting it. Time attack mode is basically just the one player arcade mode, but timed. At the end, you're assigned a ranking based on how fast you completed it, rather than your overall score. The final mode is the extras mode. In this mode, you can find the ninja files, gallery, and sound test. You can unlock stuff in this mode just by playing the game. Ninja file is a fun little bio for all of the playable characters, along with kind of a mini model viewer that lets you rotate their model and view their victory pose. Gallery is where you look at unlocked artwork, and the ones that I have here are actually artwork from the story mode. Finally, there's the sound test, which allows you to listen to music and sound effects from the game, including all of the sound effects for the characters. Here, how about a peek directly into this mode, firsthand, just for you. I really hope you enjoyed that. I know I did. Anyways, the extra mode isn't the most full-featured gallery mode I've ever seen, but it does the job, and I'm glad there's at least something here. I've just gotta say, the soundtrack in this game and just in this entire series is pretty nice. It's got the traditional instruments mixed with the rock sound that the anime has, and it fits perfectly with the Naruto aesthetic. And I looked up the composer, and I'm kinda not surprised. It's a man named Shinji Hosoe, and he has a pretty legendary portfolio. Also, speaking of sound, there's a bit of character-specific dialogue here. While there's not a ton, I did run into at least a few instances like this one between Naruto and Sasuke. I've been, I've been waiting, waiting for this. For this. I, I want to fight you. So honestly, I thought Clash of Ninja was just fine. I think I'm a bit spoiled because I'm used to the newer Ultimate Ninja Storm games with their gigantic rosters, tons of special moves, and an in-depth story mode. I know it's unfair to put that kind of expectation on a game developed in 2003 for the GameCube, and for what it is, it is a fun game and it's nice to play something different outside of the Ultimate Ninja formula. I just can't wait to get into the meat of this series and touch on some of the later games. Naruto Clash of Ninja 2 was released in Japan in 2003 and in the US and Europe in 2006. Visually, this game looks about the same as the first game, but in my opinion, some of the stages actually look nicer, with the addition of extra details like weather effects. On top of that, there does seem to be a little bit of additional character detail, and they seem to have figured out a way to have multiple character models on the screen at once, probably to accommodate one of the new gameplay styles that I'll mention in a minute. You can actually see this most clearly when you look at Naruto's special move. In the first game, they used 2D sprites for the shadow clones, but here it's all 3D models. Overall, it feels kind of like a lateral move visually, but it definitely looks like they were able to crank out more stuff, just with a similar visual clarity. Gameplay-wise, the game plays identically to the first one for the standard battles, but does add a couple of new battle types. The first is like a mob battle, where there's up to four characters on the stage at once. It looks like it's usually a 1 versus 2 or a 1 versus 3 affair, but the character who's alone seems to have buffs 
stats, at least it looks like they do, so it balances out. I like this because it's used quite a bit in the story mode and gives it a lot more variety, but I'll get into the story mode in a minute. The second new gameplay style is what I can best describe as kind of a wave battle. Basically, the game throws a bunch of enemies at you at the same time, and it works similarly to the group battles, but here the enemies all have very low HP and sometimes drop health and gauge recovery items when you defeat them. This only shows up one time in the main story, but I will mention it again. This mini game of sorts actually kind of reminds me of the Tekken Force mode from a couple of the Tekken games. I actually played all the Tekken games, by the way, definitely check those videos out. And before I move on, I read online that you can apparently do throws in the air in this game. I never actually got this working, but I did try. The main menu of this game starts doing that thing that a lot of anime games do, where characters pop up and say stuff, which is actually a feature I usually enjoy. Though, with this game, there was something weird that happened. Let's try not to imagine a world where Naruto and Sakura had each other's voices instead of the voices we got. The modes in this game are categorized weird still, but they're a lot better than the last game. The modes are single player, multiplayer, training, story mode, view mode, extras, and shop. The first thing I want to talk about is the shop mode. In this game, playing other modes gives you an in-game currency that you can use in the shop to unlock a variety of things. But of course, the hot item here will be additional characters. Other stuff includes extra modes and story chapters too. Though there's also some some weird stuff, like there's an item that increases your stats across the board. I feel kind of weird about this because that means that it couldn't have been very easy to balance this game, and it makes me wonder if some of the fights in the single player mode were meant to be fought with these attack buffs. I don't know, it's just weird because this does come back in future games, so I assume that there's a system in place to balance the game. That or they kinda just said screw it and had one difficulty level that could be made easier by buying these buffs. Anyways, single player mode has a few options. One player, play against computer, team battle, battle, survival, time attack, and obero mode. One player mode is, like the first game, the arcade mode. However, this one has you going through 10 fights instead of 8 for some reason. Team battle is a mode where you select 3 characters and then you select the opponent's 3 characters. Then you fight every character one at a time. I was hoping this wouldn't just be a one-on-one -on -one mode, but I guess I can't have everything. The other single player modes, including survival and time attack, are identical to how they function in the first game. Story mode here is very similar to the story mode in the first game, at least in presentation. Though the actual dialogue scenes are now just kind of character cards with expressive artwork on them, a big change to this story mode though is the addition of multiple playable characters, not just Naruto. On top of that, it incorporates one of those mob battles like I described earlier. This story mode is a bit meatier and longer than the first game story mode, and it goes from the beginning of the story up through the Chunin exams. You can still beat it in a single sitting though, as it only takes about an hour. A little detail I noticed that I really appreciate is the consistency they kept here. Specifically, things like Sakura's hair changing for the Chunin exams. I honestly would have expected them to just let her have short hair as a default hairstyle even beforehand, but they actually went the extra mile and made two separate character models for her. Another detail I noticed was an insane difficulty spike. I assume this was to make the story mode take longer? The fights just got ridiculously hard, to the point where the AI was blatantly frame-perfectly avoiding my inputs. This meant that the only viable way to win these fights without cheesing them was to deal just enough damage to the opponent and then wait for the timer to run out, which completely sucks the fun out of the story mode. I totally get it if they wanted to pad out the story's runtime, but this particular method of doing so just sours the entire experience for me. And it really doesn't even help to buy those buffs from the shop because just hitting enemies is a nightmare here. Anyways, in the single player modes, there's one more unlockable mode called Obero mode. This mode is just a standalone version of that Tekken Force-esque style of gameplay that I encountered in the story mode. It's basically the same as the story mode, but in this version, you can use whichever character you want, and the enemies also drop money now. The waves also seem to be endless in this mode, so it's sort of also kind of a survival mode this time around. The next mode is View Mode, and this mode is just a mode where you can watch two computer-controlled characters fight one round. Newer games typically stick this in the Versus menu as computer versus computer, so it is kind of interesting to see how this mode kind of evolved over time across different games. Something that I briefly mentioned that was available in the shop were additional story chapters. It's nice that there's some fun extra story 
story stuff to unlock when you're done with the base story. Most of them are just fun little side stories, but I do think a couple of these should have been in the main story campaign. Finally, there's Extras mode. In Extras, we have Sound Player, Ninja Info Card, Ninja Files, Gallery, and Item Viewer. The main new thing here is Item Viewer, which just lets you see everything that you've bought from the shop. Otherwise, nearly everything is the same here, which is honestly fine. Again, at least it's still here. So a fun little aside, this game was actually my introduction to the Naruto series overall. I wasn't really into Naruto as a kid, but my mom bought me this game at some point, and you know what? I'm glad she did. I really enjoyed it at the time, and I still enjoy it today. And as a whole, this game just feels like an expanded version of the first game. That's totally fine though, because it has much more content and way more replayability. The gameplay is still solid, albeit a bit basic, but the addition of the mob battles does add a lot of variety. Overall, I'd say that this game supersedes the first one, and I would definitely recommend this game over that game. Naruto Gekito Ninja Tyson 3 was released exclusively in Japan in 2004. So here's where it kind of branches off. After Clash of Ninja 2, the original series did not get any more Western releases on the GameCube, and instead they received their own special series, which I'll be covering later. That being said, the first two Clash of Ninja games were called Naruto Gekito Ninja Tyson in Japan, which literally translates to Naruto Great Ninja Battle. So because this game is entirely in Japanese, I'm not able to easily list off all the modes, but I can confidently say that it's almost identical in modes to the previous game. Gameplay-wise, this game plays really similarly to the last game, at least as far as I can tell, but they seem to have added a big quality of life feature here, and that's in-match transformations for some characters. Now, for the record, characters like Rock Lee have previously had the ability to do kind of a minor transformation, but stuff like Sharingan, Sasuke, and Kakashi have been completely separate characters. In this game, they've made it so you can actually use half of your chakra bar to turn on Sharingan mode, which seems to affect combos and your special move. It's nice and a fun way to shake up the gameplay. Additionally, there's now an anti-guard spam guard crush mechanic where if you guard too much, you can see a visual indicator of your remaining guard. If the blocked hits start turning red, you're really close to being guard crushed, which breaks your guard and leaves you completely open. That being said, otherwise this game is very similar to Clash of Ninja 2. So similar in fact that unless I'm missing something huge here, it almost feels like the same game. This is honestly a really incremental release and I think that's going to be a running thing here, and I don't see much merit to covering the ins and outs of things I've already talked about, but I will talk about a couple of notable things here. First, there is an expanded character roster here, which is nice because most of the core Naruto cast is now playable. Second, there's been some changes to the story mode. The presentation of the story mode here is actually almost the same, but this time there's an actual gameplay tutorial right at the beginning. A really cool change here is that now, rather than all of the fights ending with the generic victory poses, they actually sometimes end with special animations that match what happens in the story like this fight with Tamari and Tenten. Unfortunately though, they've added victory conditions to these fights. While that's normally not a problem, in that same fight simply beating Tenten isn't enough. You have to actually beat her with your special move for the victory to count. There's another fight where the goal is to block Tenten's throwables with one of Neji's special moves, not to mention the numerous fights that want you to beat enemies with super specific moves that sometimes change. I don't really have an issue with this in general though, it was just a bit difficult to figure it out given the language barrier. Also, the story mode seems to cover every everything up to right after the tuning exams. Finally, the only other really new thing that I noticed was a new four-player mob fight mode, where you can have up to four players or computers fight each other on customizable teams. This is a pretty cool mode though, and it gives me almost Super Smash Brothers vibes, since it can get kind of chaotic. The first player to two wins, wins the entire match. The other modes though, feel really similar to the previous games, even including the weird menu structure, but there's still stuff like survival, time attack, the shop, and multiplayer modes. Overall, though, this game is, in my opinion, as good as Clash of Ninja 2 was. I mean, it doesn't really do a whole lot different, but the quality of life changes here are nice. This one technically did eventually get a localization in the US, but not in the way you'd expect. But I'll explain that a little bit later. Naruto Gekito Ninja Tyson 4 was released in 2005. This is the final GameCube release and the final standard Gekito Ninja Tyson slash Clash of Ninja game in the quote-unquote original series. So one thing I immediately noticed here is that there's kind of a big presentation boost. Not only are the menus finally changed from the last two, but there's an actual 3D character and they've changed the layout of the UI and it's a lot better put together in my opinion. While it is still entirely in Japanese, it just feels more modern and easier to navigate 
navigate. Visually, this is more of the same, honestly, but it doesn't look bad by any means. In fact, I think this is a perfectly solid visual style, and they can't really improve texture quality beyond what the GameCube was capable of, so this is probably as good as it can get visually. Gameplay-wise, this game finally shakes up the formula a little bit by including playable teams of up to three characters. Unlike the previous game's three character matches, these characters can be swapped in at almost any time in a battle using the Z button at the cost of half your chakra gauge. This means that if you're taking heavy damage from a combo, or if you're in the middle of your own combo, you can sub in another character on your team to replace you and take over the fight. While another character is subbed out, their chakra gauge increases over time, meaning that you can sub someone in and almost immediately throw out one of their special moves. This also means that the gameplay here feels a lot faster paced this time, at least in my opinion. I like this a lot, and I hope this is something that future games in the series keep around. It's just more fun this way. One of my favorite little details about this new mechanic is that sometimes your extra characters will be included in the special moves too. Another change is that it looks like the characters, at least some of them, now have secondary special attacks you can use by holding a direction when you press the special button. It's essentially the same effect and outcome, but it adds more variety, which is something I really dig. Another nice touch is that the training mode actually includes options for either 1 versus 1 or this new 3 versus 3 style, which they didn't even have to do, but it's really cool that they went out of their way to make sure this was included. Oh, and they've added a much less subtle indicator of each player's guard crush gauge above the health bar, which I think is a lot better. Of course, with an awesome gameplay improvement like the three character group fights also comes a mind-boggling decision. This game, for whatever reason, made it so movement can only be done using the joystick. Why? Every previous game lets you use either the D-pad or the joystick. I know the GameCube's D-pad was a tiny little baby D-pad, but it's still way more precise than the control stick for movement. It takes so much more travel time to reposition your character, especially when this game still has that fun thing where your character constantly faces the wrong direction. I know this probably wouldn't bother everyone, but it's a pretty big annoyance to me since I played every previous game exclusively with the D-pad and basically had to retrain my muscle memory. The weirdest thing about this though is that the D-pad still works in every menu, just not in the actual fights, so they had to have specifically gone out of their way to disable it. Anyways, the story mode here does something new that I really enjoy, and that is replacing the little character portraits with full backgrounds of the original artwork for the game. While it is a bit less dynamic, I do prefer this over the portraits. One nitpick though is that sometimes the character artwork seems kind of off-model almost. It almost seems like the artwork here was in-betweens of some kind of animation that they just kind of took a still from. Either way, I am still glad it's here. The story mode here also includes a lot of those team battles I mentioned earlier, and honestly this feels a lot less repetitive. The tuning exams get a ton of focus here, and it's pretty fun being able to actually pit the full teams against each other in one big fight, rather than a series of one-on-one -on -one fights. Even if the one-on-one -on -one fights are a bit more accurate to the story, I do like this better. The story itself goes all the way through the end of Naruto, culminating in the waterfall fight between Naruto and Sasuke. Speaking of, this fight actually has a cool little additional thing, where you're actually given a choice between playing as Naruto or Sasuke, which is actually really neat. This game seems to have done away with the shop mode and has gone back to unlocking things solely through just playing the story mode, it looks like. And the roster itself, while not massive by modern standards, has definitely come a long way from the small handful from the first game, and it includes a pretty big chunk of the core cast. So overall, I think this game's biggest strength is the addition of the group battles with switchable characters. Without that, I think this game would have really just felt like more of the same. I did like the story mode artwork though, but that alone isn't enough to really change up the formula. Either way, I can confidently say that this is the best entry in the series on the GameCube. It's just a shame it was never released in the West. Well, not fully, at least. Naruto Clash of Ninja Revolution was released for the Wii in North America in 2007, with other Western regions following in 2008. Note that this game was not released in Japan, and that's because this game is essentially a reworked port of Gekito Ninja Taisen 3 for Western audiences. So if you were a fan of these games and you didn't follow the Japanese releases, this was the next available Clash of Ninja game you could play after Clash of Ninja 2. Visually, this looks pretty much the same. I mean, there's definitely the smallest texture quality improvement, which you can mostly see in the UI, but it's still nearly identical to previous games. One of the biggest differences here is that, at least on the surface, it looks like there's more detail in the stages. Random objects are littered on some of the stages now, too, and these are actually interactive objects. You can hide behind them, jump over them, and break them. The camera also seems to be a lot more dynamic, and this really shows during the special moves. It moves around a lot more, and the shots are way less of just static angles. Also, in my opinion, the animation feels a bit more fluid, but that could be either because of the more dynamic camera or more 
of a gameplay tuning thing, I'm not sure. Speaking of, gameplay wise, this game still feels like Clash of Ninja, but there's some new stuff here. First, even though this is Gekito Ninja Tyson 3 content wise, the visual indicator of the guard crush bar returns here. Of course, that also means that the cool team battle mechanic from the last game is actually completely gone. I can forgive that though, since there have been some other changes and improvements, like a brand new stage transition mechanic, where sometimes if you knock an opponent into the side of a stage, they'll be thrown into a completely different area with an entire animation to go along with it. I don't think this is possible on every stage, but it makes sense for the stages it's on since a bunch of them have these large cliff edges that previously just acted like walls. Oh, and this game supports both Wiimote and Nunchuck input along with GameCube controller input. I stuck with the GameCube controller for these games. There is an extra waggle thing you can do with the Wiimote and Nunchuck for special moves, but I couldn't really figure it out properly and it seemed gimmicky at best. Weirdly, for a game that's essentially a remake of Ninja Tyson 3, the roster here is actually a tiny bit smaller for some reason. I'm not sure why but it could have something to do with some of the gameplay changes, like the new animations for the transitions or something? That's just my prediction though, because I actually don't know why. Oh, and before I move on, the menus here are also identical to the ones in Ninja Tyson 3, just with changed and localized options. The modes in this game are single player, multiplayer, mission, training, watch mode, minigame, and extras. Single player includes the single player arcade mode, time attack, versus CPU, and survival. I won't cover these modes again though, because I've already talked about them at length. Length. Mission mode is, as you probably guessed, the story mode. In this, the story goes through the same content as the original, basically covering everything up through Tsunade's introduction. It also goes into the conflict between the legendary Sanin, with some extra missions sprinkled in after that too. The presentation returns to this visual novel style with characters represented by artwork on the screen, but it does feel like there's a little bit more of a dynamic feel to these since the portraits actually can move this time around, which is actually kind of a running theme for this game. Lots of new dynamic elements. A brand new mode to this game is minigame mode. Here you can play three minigames, Shuriken Throw, Rasengan Training, and Shadow Clone Jutsu. All three of these games require the Wii Remote. Shuriken Throw is a simple target practice game. The goal is to point the Wii Remote at all the targets and to hit them. You get more points for hitting the upper half of a target, but the lower half doesn't knock the target down even if you get fewer points. This allows you to sometimes strategically spam throws at a single target to maximize your score. Hitting Sakura at all will dock you points though. This minigame is fine, but it doesn't really do anything special special and it kind of feels out of place. Let me turn into a real nitpicky critic here. Who are you in this mode? Who is happily mowing down these wooden cutouts of Team 7? Why did someone have so many of these wooden cutouts? The lore implications here are wild. Rasengan training mode is where the goal is to hit these dummies using Naruto's Rasengan with the help of a shadow clone. This mode is my overall least favorite of these mini games. The whole mode is just to shake the Wii Remote and Nunchuck as hard as you can. That's pretty much it. There is kind of a timing element to it but really, this mode just wasn't enjoyable to me at all, and it felt really gimmicky. The final mini game is Shadow Clone Jutsu. In this one, Naruto will spawn Shadow Clones and then start moving around the screen by swapping with the other Shadow Clones. The goal is to throw a kunai at the real Naruto. This is basically just a spin on the ball under a cup game, but it was also my favorite of the bunch because it actually got pretty challenging once you started getting further along. I feel really weird about mini games like this because they felt like they were a relic of a time where every Wii game felt the need to just the existence of motion controls, and I think that's why I liked the Shadow Clone game the most. It was just simple and something you might find in a regular minigame mode where they weren't trying to use motion controls. Anyways, Extras mode returns and includes the ninja info cards and the item viewer like we've seen previously, but there's now a movie viewer mode that has the intro and ending cutscenes from the game. It also has trailers for both the Naruto movie, which I'm not even going to risk showing here. The most interesting trailer though is for a Nintendo DS game called Naruto Ninja Council 3. Wait a minute, this game looks kind Kinda like Jump Superstars. Hmm, maybe I'd like these. I should definitely give these a try sometime. Anyways, it's weird but neat seeing this kind of movie player thing here. It would have been even cooler if they'd stuck an episode of the show or something in here, but I know that's kind of a tall ask, especially given the relative small file size limit of a DVD. So overall, this game feels like another incremental improvement. It took some steps forward, but also some steps back, so it feels kind of like an overall lateral move. It's still a really solid game though, and I may be biased because I did just recently play a bunch of the game that this game is based directly on, something most of this game's target audience probably didn't do. Either way, this is a really solid game, and I'm glad that the content here isn't locked behind a regional wall. 
And that's it for part one. Part two will cover, well, the remaining games in the series, including the Revolution games and the Gekito Ninja Tyson EX games. So far, these are really enjoyable games mechanically and visually, and they still hold up even today. Sure, playing them one after another has kind of led to them feeling kind of samey to me, but I can still see the incremental improvements in retrospect. It actually helps to go back and look at the first game to compare it with the more recent ones, because it's super easy to forget the small quality of life gameplay and visual improvements that we've seen over the course of this series. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Part 2 is being worked on right now and should be out really soon. Well, if you're in the future and you're watching this, Part 2 may already be out, so definitely check. Anyways, again, thank you so much for watching and have a fantastic day.